welcome to Cassia Dialogue, the video podcast brought to you from Cassia BC that aims to bring businesses across 16 countries of Central Asia and Southeast Asia region. A safe space where we invite industry heads, market leaders and entrepreneurs to come on the show as Cassia loggers to share insights, industry tips with all our Cassia friends watching or listening in and also with the intention to inspire, open up new conversations to ignite possibilities to dream again. And if you're a Cassia member, you will have access to the VIP lounge where you will receive mindset tricks that have helped them succeed in these trying times. But most importantly, offer suggestions on how you can scale and transfer across the 16 countries with sensitivity and finesse. Location, courtesy of Ikigai at the River Walk. Hello, Cassia friends. Welcome back to another edition of Cassia Dialogue. And today I'm really honored to introduce to you Eldrin T. So Eldrin is a man who wears many hats. In fact, he has many interests. Starting out as an educator, you have actually moved into many areas of, well, impact for good. Along with that, you've also volunteered in many areas. Please give me a moment, I have a long list to read because I really want our Cassia friends to know this, okay? So, co-founder of Google Educators Group in Singapore, first batch of Apple Professional Development Consultant in Singapore, Principal of Think Shift Design, Chief Operating Officer of Social Collider, also serving as the advisory board member of the Singapore Training and Development Association, Secretary General of the Young Entrepreneurs Society of Singapore, that's YES, and other appointments in various enterprises to form the profit businesses of impact enterprises. This actually frames up the human capital innovation, social innovation, social impact, and, and the likes. I mean, this is a, a beautifully long list of things that you, you commit to, you know, uh, on a voluntary basis, you're building ecosystems, you're teaching people how to, you know, create um, businesses in line with the SDG and ESG goals. You're this really passionate serial entrepreneur. I really want to find out so much about you and what drives you in this area. But before we dig into that, I want to find out a little bit more about the real Eldrin. <laughs> Hello, Eldrin. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to have you. <laughs> exactly. So, this is how we always start. Tell me a little bit about Eldrin T. What we cannot find on Google searches. <laughs> well, I think um, I don't think you'll find much information about me on Google. Uh, I, I don't really like to um, post things out in public. I think uh, data security is you know, very important right now. <laughs> yes, we just had a session with Mark actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I think um, yeah. So for me, I I'm, I, I keep a bit more to myself, and um, I like a lot of me time. And I think in today's world where um, there's just so much going on out there, we all need to have our own quiet spaces. Yeah. And, and for me, I, I like to have that space where I can spend time in my hobbies. So perhaps, uh, yeah. No, I totally agree with you on that because, you know, for me, I'm also trying to keep my family away from the spotlight. But at the same time, I want to find out a little bit about what hobbies you have. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I do try to use my hands as much as possible. Uh, I dabble a bit in um, carpentry. Wow! Yeah, and uh, off later, I've been um, trying my hand at cooking because we've been uh, rescuing food, uh, we're in the food rescue uh, operations recently, oh. taking some uh, f f unsold fruits and vegetables and breads from, you know, from the shops. And I've been trying to turn them into new dishes Hopefully, uh, you know, to be able to make use of all these uh, resources, they are often discarded. I think um, food is also extremely important for our Asian culture because that's how we talk about love, right? You know, we, we show love and concern by um, creating dishes and feeding people that, uh, that are around us. And I think this is one of the main things that we should, you know, be proud of in our Asian community. But moving from 
food rescue is something that I wanted to focus on actually because this is something that's probably new to us. Could you tell us more about that? Um, well, um, I think in our modern society, um, it's a buy and throw society. We spend all our time at work earning lots of money and then we buy whatever we like and whatever we don't like, we throw. So I think that creates lots of waste. And I think a lot of people don't realize um, that whatever that is not sold in the shops is thrown away. Yeah. Yeah. So what do we do with it? Um, instead of burning more incinerators, more landfills, I think um, as a community or in communities, we can try to pitch in and somehow reuse uh, you know, some of these waste. Of course, I mean, the common message is always to reduce. But I think we can go one step more besides reducing wastage uh, is to actually take the waste uh, that people discard and use it for something for yourself or to turn it into something more valuable. So for example, when I dabble in my carpentry, um, I'm actually in upcycling. So I, I often go down to the uh, waste disposal, you know, the garbage uh, center near where I live and I'll look for discarded items and I'll take them home in my workshop and turn them into new objects and give them to friends, you know, and, and use it at home. So same thing for food. You know, although there are certain like foods and vegetables that are discarded, maybe because they're a little bit soft or a little bit uh, discolored. discolored. But I think that with a bit of creativity, with a bit of innovation, you can turn some of these, uh, these foods into good use. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know about the ugly fruits um, drive in Singapore and I, I, I love it because, you know, I just blend it and have it in my shakes. Wonderful, <laughs> ugly foods. Yeah. It's actually one of the startups that, uh, that we incubated uh, years ago. Yeah. Ah, yes, I wanted to talk about the incubation bit as right. well. So, spoken like a true sustainable <laughs> sustainability advocate, right? I can see that you're so passionate in this. Like, what drove you into this area? I think um, it's very important for us sometimes to take a step back from our uh, everyday lives. Mm -hmm. Um, and think about what's going on around us, what's happening in the world. Uh, I mean, with uh, ICT, with uh, technology, with media, we hear a lot about how the world is uh, very unequal. Uh, but we also hear about many opportunities out there where many ground-up communities are forming. People get together and try to make a positive difference in the world. And, and sometimes when I see the efforts of these individuals and groups, I think it's a very um, exciting and uh, positive spirit that just makes you want to be part of them or to, to be like them. Yeah. And I think this is how movements grow. And, and this is something which I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's yeah. what I, I encourage. Uh, I mean, to be very honest, that's also our positioning for Cassia BC. Mm. And what better time to, to start this movement, right? I mean, the whole world is on pause and finally we get a time to stop. The machine has stopped rotating and we all get a chance to just breathe a little bit, stop that machine running and really reflect and think back what is really important to us, like what you said, and how we can actually look at redefining our purpose in life and how we want to, I don't know, transfer, transmit, you know, convert our resources, our experiences into something that's a little bit more positive. And, you know, this really drives home the message of innovation from experience. Eldrin, I also know that you're an avid traveler. Is it safe to say that all these experiences that you've, you know, seen and, and grown and, and visited and, and, you know, been to all these other places and countries around the region and the world that you've been to, has given you a new perspective on how we can move forward with life, business, and I don't know, just you know, networking in Singapore. Um, actually, traveling is something that I, I highly encourage, but not just traveling to visit as a tourist. Mm. Uh, I think the type of travel that I like to advocate would be more of the immersive kinds. So I think one of the things that really changed my life and got me into this whole um, industry is when I quit my job. How brave. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, even my parents were very shocked why I would quit a, a job that I was good at. And um, yeah, 
sometimes you've got to take that, that, that leap of faith uh, and to go out there into the world and to see the world as it is. And that's what happened to me. Um, I was a school teacher. Uh, and I felt that you know, as a school teacher, I, had, I need to deliver value in the classroom. But if I don't understand how the world works and you know, with rose-tinted lenses, I think it's difficult for me to teach. So I decided that I wanted to travel. Yeah, I went through this, uh, applicate, this app, and that was like 10 years ago. And this app was called Couchsurfing. And what happened in Couchsurfing is that people open up their homes for free. Wow. And allow others to stay in their homes. And thus allowing, especially travelers from afar to come and to really immerse themselves right, in, in, in the culture of a place and to really live the life as if you were uh, you know, a person, a native. Yeah, and so that's what I did. Um, traveling, I started from India all the way overland, all the way to the UK. And can you imagine staying in the homes of people from India, Pakistan, Iran, you know, Syria, Lebanon, countries which you can only read about in history books. And, and I think that's the most important thing, that is to really go out there to experience for yourself, right? What is life like for others? So that when you think about your own life and how you are going to lead it, yeah, you come with that uh, knowledge that this world, no matter how varied we are, how different we are, we are all similar in many ways. We all just want to live happy lives you know, in whatever happy means to us. Mm. Yeah, and I think we, we need to understand that we live in one, only on one earth. And if we keep, keep living happy lives, you know, eating, drinking, right, making merry, but not sharing it with others, or, and you understand that there are also others out there that don't have that kind of um, opportunities to have the happy life that you have, then you realize that there's a lot that we, we should be doing yeah. Yeah, to, to be, uh, you know, to make a difference in this world. I mean, to pardon that, that little... Uh, <laughs> no, but that's yeah. what we're here humans. for. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that, that's the real purpose in life. It's mm. to, to learn and gain education through experiences that's right not just through books and you know the, the formal ways of learning you know then it becomes theory that's right. and you can't really you know express or, or create from theory you need to actually know and internalize all these learnings through experiences so Elgin you started from being this educator and then you quit your job that's something unheard of especially in our culture and you moved on into traveling, gaining experiences as you went. You figured out what was the, the, you know, the optimal ways of doing things and you figured out what life really was all about. You know, people um, doing good, bringing things forward, helping each other. And that's totally mind-blowing because that's really stepping outside of what we know to be the way, you know, in, in a, especially in our Singapore culture, right? It's always about progress efficiency. But how has this led to what you're doing in your profession, right? We know that you, you're, you're always volunteering and you're in the area of doing good. Is this the same for your professional life? I, I believe it's, it all has to, be, uh, it has to be done holistically. And one of the things that I really promote and encourage people to do is to follow the 80-20 principle. That whatever you do, yes, you spend 80% of your time doing what you know, doing what you are good at, you know, in your day job, earning the money for, for family. But I think it's important to spend 20% of your time and effort into projects that help you to grow, that help others to grow. And perhaps this, this uh, 20% could be in areas where you are very uncomfortable with. In fact, the more uncomfortable you are with it, the, the better it is for you because that will really stretch you and push you. Getting outside of your comfort zone. That's right. Because we are living in a growth-centric world. That's right. And again, that's the whole thing about what you mentioned about experience. You can never gain experience just by sitting there waiting for things to happen to you. You really have to get yourself out there and again, be willing to make yourself uncomfortable. So, um, like for example, uh, I started off as a school teacher 
So everybody thinks that as a school teacher, you know, your job is in the classroom, which is true. We have to, you know, spend our time, most of the time in the classroom. But I also spend 20% of my time, all right, interacting with teachers from other schools, finding out what are some of their special programs, what are some of their technologies they use. And that's how um, we, well, a few teachers from my school and other schools, co-founded the Singapore uh, Google Educators Group. And that's an example of a kind of ground up projects that we can do that is not, uh, that is related to, uh, relevant to your profession, but yet something that is new, a little bit uncomfortable, and yet can make a big difference. That's collaborations for a better tomorrow. Yes, that's right. That's right. Amazing. So going to this 20% um, of discomfort, imagine if you are doing a business too. Uh, as we know that the world is changing so quickly, um, and now with the COVID situation, many of the traditional businesses, you know, like for example, those that rely on customers, you know, in-house in, in customers, when we had our shutdowns, they are badly affected. And the thing is this, when you are affected, do you sit around and wait for the emergency to pass? Or do you, you know, take the leap forward and do something different to try to still remain relevant in this new world that has happened? And you find that those that were, who spent a lot of time you know, looking at some of the newer technologies, especially you know, the digitization of their businesses, found that they could pivot their business quickly. So for example, an FMV business, you could uh, you know, do the food del deliveries, especially now that it's uh, getting very popular. Right? Even, the, um, even in Malaysia, you have an airline company moving into the food business. That tells you a lot how even big enterprises, big MNCs can also pivot. So I think this is something that we need to consider in, in, in ourselves, whether as an individual, you know, with our free time, going out to volunteer, whether we are employees, right, working in businesses to do our own projects or to encourage your employers to try new projects so that they can uh, explore other avenues. Or even if you are MNC, you should also consider building new capabilities. I think that's really important to note. And especially for Cassia BC, you know, we, we position ourselves to be the educators for, well, adult learners. Uh, and we try to groom startups and new businesses, new ventures moving forward, and also help them to scale across 16 countries. And we're also trying to have SMEs in on this bigger picture to lend their expertise and build collaborations for a better tomorrow. Uh, I like to joke that, you know, Casa BC is all about helping businesses go through A and E. And it's not what you think, it's access and education and seeing how, uh, where you're coming from. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about TSD because I know that's exactly about grooming startups and helping people build great ecosystems to be able to tackle these issues moving forward. Can we talk about you know, that access and that education? So I, I think that's quite um, pertinent in this case. Now, when I first started TSD, which is uh, more on uh, corporate training and consulting, we did a lot of projects more with MNCs and governments I mean, because they could pay. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, governments and MNCs realize that there is a need to grow. That's why they constantly invest top dollar to learn and to change and to grow. But in, in the years that followed that I did TSD, um, I realized that the industry that requires the most support and most consulting are actually the SMEs. Because SMEs don't, cannot afford to pay the high rates that consultants uh, you know, charge. And yet SMEs are the ones that will be the first to be affected whenever there are you know, global changes. Mm. So that's where um, TSD is very happy to, to join the Kasia BC movement to provide the expertise and experiences that we have and to offer it to SMEs so that SMEs can also get the same quality of services, right? And the same quality of learning that the MNCs and government, uh, ag government agencies have. That's really insightful because I always thought that SMEs would be 
be able to survive, but this is an extremely volatile market right now. That's right. So, you know, being able to gain access to, I don't know, legal, you know, um, right. uh, accelerated programs, you know, right. corporate, latest, govern corporate yeah. governance, right? A lot of startups don't realize that right now in today's world, um, again, due to social media, it's easy to just read up a lot about your company and what you do. So you could spend lots of money on your branding, marketing, you could have 20, 30 years, or even 100 years worth right, of branding, but just due to poor governance, you know, it can all come down you know, like, a, like a deck of cards. So this is something that I think it's important today that we need to look at. So Elgin, as you know, I too am a founder of Co-Curator and I would be extremely interested to find out like how I can benefit from these resources that you can bring into Cassia BC, for example. Mm. So I, I think the experiences that I had in the, in the corporate world shows that the SMEs should also benefit really from these uh, processes, whether is it um, corporate compliance and such to protect your interests. But moving forward, I think one of the ideas is that right now the world is changing very rapidly and with it, there are many opportunities. Many opportunities. And I think SMEs like, like, like yours will find that your market is not just limited to your country. And sometimes your market may not be limited only to your industry. Uh, the whole idea behind Cassia BC is to give the opportunity for SMEs to spread their wings and to really go out there and sell to the world. And number two, as you are selling to the global market, you can also have the first-hand you know, contact and to see what are the needs of the people, what do they want in terms of products and services. And that's where you can also start to innovate right, and to generate and create new products and services to meet these uh, demands of the market. So besides access, right? I think the idea about innovation is also to modify your products and services to attract the, 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 the market demands. I can see how you're using all your experiences to actually you know, wing it into this area of social innovation, impact and capital. This is extremely important because I know moving forward, all businesses should comply to the SDG and ESG rules or guidelines, sorry. So I think the, the, the need to comply is always seen as uh, you're forced to do it. But I think we need to realize that everyone, okay, maybe not everyone, but a lot of uh, individuals and organizations and businesses are getting on this SDG bandwagon, not as a means to, you know, because of compliance, but because it affords opportunities. Every, if everyone has the same meta language, the same language to use, you find that you can now trade with one another and you can now do business with one another. So for example, if you do own a startup that for example does uh, recording, video recording, right? Uh, making um, interviews. Like this. Like this, that's right. Um, you realize that because now like Zoom, everyone is used to Zoom you find that you do not need to be physically present in order to, to make professional videos. In fact, uh, with just a little bit of uh, you know, digital magic, you can, you can make um, videos of an interview with someone who has thousands of miles away all right, in Central Asia. And I think that's the power of Cassia BC as well, that uh, we want to bring our, our expertise um, share it with others and at the same time to be able to access new markets all right do things in new ways so sdgs are that example right whereby you can really now um, focus on areas of good and sell services that do good so for example if you are uh, uh, again video making why not uh, approach some of the ngos all right and help them, help the NGOs in another country create new marketing materials, interview them so that they can have a wider reach and gain access perhaps to you know, other countries where they can also buy their products and services so that they can have more income rather than just their, their market space within their own countries. Yeah. I think you touched on a very important thing here because 
right now out there, the word sustainability is fleeting. But it's actually so simple. It's how can we connect and how can we add value to each other, even if we are you know, miles and miles apart from Central Asia to Southeast Asia. How can we connect these markets and create something that will be able to help each other grow continuously? And that, that is the sustainability of the business. That's right. And in, again, in terms of sustainability as well, we, we also have big problems, especially among startups and SMEs, um, to find people of talent. And again, in your industry, in terms of video making, you have really supply of people who are already skilled in video making. And that is the people who do who are on board TikTok. So it's just a little, it's a, little a matter of pushing them a little bit from just putting videos out there for to gain uh, attention to more towards you know, perhaps a profession, and a profession that can then feed back into the system where they can use their skills as video makers to help to market and sell uh, for good enterprises. And, and that's the whole idea which what I think Cassia BC has a very, very good value in, right? To, to close the loop, right? U using education as for a start, right? Followed by transforming existing um, businesses and then supplying them opportunities to do good which in turn get people invo more involved and more passionate about what they do. Yes, because as the saying goes, you know, you can only go so far when you're focusing on yourself. If you want to go further, your why has to be bigger. Ethnocentric nature of, well, human beings can actually add more value and find more vision and purpose in what they do when they, then they actually can see how their efforts can help somebody else. Yeah, I think you've touched on a very important subject matter that's always blind to businesses because more often than not, we're always trying to struggle to just survive. But if we just aim at the goalpost to just survive, then we're not going to get very far. But if we aim to thrive and to see how we can add value and help other people, then all of a sudden, it's effortless because everybody wants to jump on board because everybody can see value in helping each other grow. Beautiful. Thank you, Eldrin, for making it so simple to understand. There you go. Having that background in education and being a teacher, you know, in, in your own right, has made it so simple for us to get such a complex idea across in just so many ways. Well, is there anything else that you know you want to add? Because I think you know, do you have any tips or, or guidance that our Cassie friends and members will be able to take on board almost immediately and take action? So I think we have talked about the idea of experience is important. We really need to go through that process mm -hmm. and not just read about it and just know of it. And in order to gain that experience, you really need to get out of your comfort zones try something that you are unsure of. And again, all you need to do is just to, again, follow the 80-20 rule. Just take 20% of your time and effort, invest in this experiential learning so that you can experience first time, firsthand for yourself the value that it brings. And hopefully, this new learnings, these new experiences can transform your, your life, your business, and of course, finally, the world. I love that. So if I can just sum this up nicely for us, your role as the Chief Innovation and Sustainability Officer is here with us at Cassia BC to guide us along so that we can actually add value to the world. And your, your influence and your, your experience in, in PSD can actually come on board to really help us along for startups and SMEs to, to gain access to resources, you know, uh, governance and, well, well, marketing, everything, really, to be able to really create, well, a business that can help us be profitable, so that that's really important. It's not just about doing good, but we need to be able to feed ourselves and make some money to be able to give from our overflow. Did I get it right? Well, 
overflow is one way, but sometimes you can also earn money and do good at the same time. That's true. Yeah. So for example, right, we have already mentioned so many. I think what's more important is we need to get our hands dirty and to go out there and try. And the first step is always to join communities that are already doing it and start learning from them. And that's right, Kasia BC is, is a very good start. Very nice boiling pot. So there you have it. Plain and simple. Sustainability, growth, scalability. And with you on board, I really am very sure that we're going to make a lot of impact. If you have any questions, if you want to reach out to, to us, any of us, in any respect, please just click on the link below. I'm going to add, um, well, PSD's link as well, if you would like to get in touch with Eldrin. But more so, just get in touch with us, you know, see whether it feels right for you. Because I'm very sure that we can collaborate and do some nice businesses together. So thank you, Aldrin, for joining us today and spending so much time just to explain this extremely interesting area of you know, social innovation, impact, and well, capital. So if you are dying to find out more, please reach out to us. Click on the link below and you know, like, share, comment, subscribe. Why not? So we'll, we'll look forward to having a conversation with you very soon. Thank you.